Dan Straub is the president of the Victorian Duck Hunting Association and he's on the line now. Good morning, Dan. Uh, do you think there's change in the air and we're going to see the duck hunting season cancelled in Victoria as it has been in other states? Uh, good morning, Fiona. Good to talk to you. Uh, I don't really see that shift, Fiona. Uh, there's a lot of misleading information out there regarding the duck hunting and also population numbers. Now, there's always a big uh, push on low bird numbers, but as we all know, uh, ducks in Australia travel around. They, they don't worry about borders. They can up and leave overnight from a t- particular area, following that good water and those good f- uh, food sources. So it's very hard to get an accurate number uh, at any one time. And with the survey process, uh, it really depends on the day and the time of day that those wetlands are surveyed. But on a whole, uh, we are looking at very strong duck numbers, I believe. Um, if, if, lots... if it's hard, though, to do accurate numbers, shouldn't the government err on the side of caution and not have a duck hunting season just in case there are low numbers out there? Well, I don't think so, Fiona, and there's no definite proof that hunting uh, is, has a detrimental effect on the duck population whatsoever. Uh, the big threat could come from other avenues like environmental issues. Uh, loss of habitat is probably the biggest reason that uh, populations can be low in areas uh, and they just obviously get up and move away to a, a better environment. But we're, we're seeing uh, you know, lots of efforts from uh, a range of different duck hunting groups or, or hunting groups in particular, really investing in the environmental side of things and promoting habitat and promoting bird How? Uh, breeding. So over the, the years, uh, there's been lots of organisations like the Field and Game, like the SSAA, who have been around for a long time, have actively promoted uh, nest box programs, have uh, taken part in tree planting and weed control programs around our state game reserves and other wetlands. Uh, there, there's lots and lots of uh, funds set up that uh, are raising money to, to put back into the duck hunting conservation. So we do do a, a lot behind the scenes and we don't often just, you know, spruik much of the good work we're doing, but we're definitely doing it. And um, it, it is really showing off, uh, showing what we can achieve uh, as, as a whole, as a, a united group moving forward. Sure. It, it is fair to say, though, there are some bad eggs out there. We learnt that a few years ago with the Box Flat Massacre and other um, events where duck hunters have disobeyed the rules, um, where they have partaken in illegal activity, where they've started uh, shooting before time, where they've left carcasses, where uh, they've shot species that simply shouldn't be shot in, in quite large numbers. Um, how, how do you uh, react to that sort of thing and the general community uproar that ensues? Yeah, uh, there is bad eggs in every facet of, of life and community, I suppose. And I do not condone those actions whatsoever. They're, they're very disappointing to hear that those activities have taken place. Uh, they have been uh, somewhat one off There hasn't been uh, constant instances of that happening. Uh, and the circumstances around those uh, are still really unknown, unknown to me anyway. I know uh, re- re- regarding the box flat incident, there was... Uh, a legal action taken there, and I think some people were prosecuted. So, uh, sure, it was it, hard to get anyone to talk, though. There seemed to be a cone of silence among the shooters who were in attendance that morning. Yeah, well, I suppose that's, that's uh, a, an issue, but like I said, we don't condone any of those actions, and um, we would like to see compliance from all hunters at all times, which we do uh, 99% of the time. So, it's you know, those instances that are more publicised in mainstream media that give us the bad name and the rest of it is overlooked.
Late, late last doing. year, though, the um, Game Management Authority released the results of a survey that quizzed hunters in the state about hunting rules and what they should and shouldn't be doing and uh, the birds that they were allowed to shoot and those that they weren't. And it revealed that just 20% were able to correctly answer questions about bird identification. Is that good enough? Those figures on the survey, Fiona, uh, were, I think I read that particular uh, question was relating to non-game bird species, which uh, it, it's very hard to you know, get uh, any one person unless you're a, uh, a fanatic uh, bird watcher or study every single bird species. It's hard to know uh, every single bird, but with the, the game licensing structure, all hunters have to study and fit their waterfowl identification test before they're eligible for their hunting licence. And that's, that's uh, a course that um, is undertaken by thousands of people who want to become duck hunters. And if they don't pass, they don't get granted a licence uh, via the appropriate authority. So the, the survey I haven't seen, uh, I heard that there was a survey going around, but then there is lots of surveys that the GMA put out and they've been target, targeting them at uh, certain age demographics from what I understand and I have not been in that, that age demographic to, to partake, so I can't really answer a lot on the questions of the survey but I, uh, I do have to reiterate that if a, a hunter wants to gain a game licence, they need to study and fit their waterfowl identification test have a 100% score on that before they're issued their game licence. So there is that compliance there. So you're saying they have to know, to get the licence, they have to know what birds they are allowed to shoot. They don't Correct. have to know every bird species. Correct, um, that's right. Okay, let's just bring it back before we let you go to what some see as pressure mounting on the state government to ban duck hunting altogether. Uh, you don't think anything's going to come of that? I, I I don't think that it's really warranted to have a full ban on the duck season. We've had uh, fairly good conditions across uh, most of eastern Victoria. Uh, there is obviously dry patches. Uh, duck numbers, uh, although the big authority or the big survey structure, I suppose, uh, is pointing to low numbers, we do not believe that at the VDHA. Uh, we have conducted our own small surveys of wetlands around northern Victoria. We've had members involved in in counting ducks on on particular wetlands in uh, eastern and and also west southwestern Victoria. And uh, we believe numbers are actually quite strong, and there's been uh, good signs of breeding. And uh, a lot of the population, duck population, were uh, were young birds that are still growing. That'll be fully grown by the time. The duck season comes in March, so uh, there is always pressure uh, to ban uh, our our duck season. But the it, it's not really warranted. We don't believe it's warranted, and there's lots of of benefits that hunting and duck hunting in particular uh, contributes not just to the members that partake, but to the uh, the economy and the community as a whole. Okay, we must leave it there. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dan Straub, President of the Victorian Duck Hunting Association, and we'll wait to see what the Game Management Authority recommends and what the state government announces.